So the photoelectric effect deals with shining light onto the surface of a metal. So and depending on the light, you have a chance to actually eject an electron off of that metal. So, and again, there was a couple of problems here that classical theory couldn't explain. So it turns out that classically, we looked at the energy of a photon as being related more to the amplitude of the wave, which is what we thought the intensity of it would be related to. So let's say it takes a photon of green light, let's say, for this particular metal to get an electron off of that. And we know that green light has a certain wavelength and frequency associated with it and energy associated with it, and that the wavelength or frequency is actually what determines the energy, not the intensity. So it turns out when you increase the intensity of the beam, you're not actually increasing the amplitude of the wave, you're just actually increasing the number of green green photons or blue photons or red photons that are actually in your light beam. And so in this case, it turns out if you use green light, the more intense the beam, the more electrons would get ejected. So, and if you used something more energetic than green, say the blue light, what you'd find out is the greater the intensity, the more electrons, but the electrons would be coming off on average faster. And they end up with the overall faster maximum kinetic energy. And if instead of green or blue light, let's say you dropped it down to red light, which is lower energy than green light, it turns out that you got no electrons. And it doesn't matter how intense you made the red light beam, you got zero electrons ejected. And so they had a problem. They figured, you know, well, if I make it more intense, I'm increasing the amplitude, it should be more energy, and it broke down. So what they found out is that the energy of your photon is actually not related to the amplitude, but related to the frequency of the wave. And so by changing the color, you're changing the frequency. And I could have the most intense red beam and no electrons, but I could have the most unintense or faint green beam, and I'd start getting electrons. And so they figured out that intensity wasn't related necessarily to an amplitude of the wave, but it turns out it's due to the number of, related to the number of photons. But the energy of that photon's not related to its amplitude, but to its frequency. So that was the big deal here. Just to clarify, so when they did red or blue, green, green or blue light, at a certain intensity, they got a certain number of electrons. And when they increased it for blue and red, increase the intensity for blue and green, they get more electrons. Correct. And it turns out with blue light, which is more energetic, the electrons also had more kinetic energy coming off as well. But if you drop below some threshold, all of a sudden, it didn't matter how intense you made the beam, if you're below that certain threshold energy of photons, you got nothing. No electrons being ejected whatsoever. And intensity Correct. It turns out intensity is number of photons. So notice that means we're looking at the at light as more of a particle when we look at it as photons instead of a wave. And so that was kind of you know one of the big problems with classical theory is it only looked at light as with wave-like properties, and that's why they thought the intensity was only related to its amplitude, not necessarily to its frequency, or that it had individual light bullets, as I like to call them, called photons, that had their own discrete energy. So in this case, it turns out that the higher energy the light you hit it with, the greater the maximum kinetic energy you might end up with on your photons. And so in this case, I'm sorry, on the electrons ejected. And so in this case, if you took the energy of your photons, which we learned was equal to HF, and you subtract off something called the work function, and the work function is just the minimum energy required to eject an electron from a particular metal. So depending on the metal, they might have different work functions. It's related to kind of like to ionization energy, if you will. So in this case, let's say that a particular metal has a work function of four electron volts, let's just say, for instance, four electron volts. Then what would be the minimum energy needed in your photon to get an electron to be ejected? for electron volts. And if you find out what color or what region of the electromagnetic spectrum that is, anything with less energy wouldn't eject any electrons. But once you hit that minimum energy, every photon has a chance to eject one electron. So one to one ratio there. In this case, if you hit it with five electron volts, well, that means that the electrons that are being ejected off now could have as much as one electron volt of kinetic energy. So any extra energy of the incident photons the electrons get to keep that, or at least keep a maximum of that, as their own kinetic energy coming off. Everybody cool with how this works? Cool. So that's the photoelectric effect. And again, classical theory couldn't explain this. So, but the idea that light is quantized as photons that have energies related to uh, frequency here as well is that the electrons we're ejecting 
also have a discrete energy explaining why we have this work function at a set value. If you look at kind of a graph of how this works, like the one on your sheet there, So if you look here, you find out that if you're below a certain frequency, you get nothing. There's no ejected electrons or whatsoever. You've got to hit some sort of threshold frequency right at that point, which I'll just call F naught. And once you're above that threshold, that threshold frequency, then all of a sudden the kinetic energy starts going up. But right at that threshold frequency, you've got no excess kinetic energy for the electrons. But the higher the frequency of the light, the higher the energy of that light, the more and more that maximum kinetic energy is going to grow. Cool. You could also graph this as a function of wavelength, FYI. How are frequency and wavelength of light, light related? Yeah, they're inverse proportional. So think about how that might change the graph a little bit. Instead of having a minimum frequency, what would we have in terms of wavelength? We'd have a maximum wavelength at which electrons could be ejected instead of a minimum frequency. So keep in mind, opposite relationship with wavelengths. Cool. So question number one on your handout. Let's see how the math plays out here. What is the maximum wavelength of light that will result in the electron being ejected from gold metal? And we're given the work function for gold is 5.1 electron volts and Planck's constants given there in parentheses. So if I want that maximum wavelength, what does that mean? So yeah, the lowest frequency possible. And, and obviously we could solve for the frequency and then turn it into a wavelength, or we could just simply substitute in. And so in this case, we could write the equation here and write the energy of a photon as hc over lambda minus that work function. In this case, if I want the maximum wavelength possible, then what would that imply about the kinetic energy the electrons have after being ejected? Be zero. And in this case, we're told for gold, it's 5.1 electron volts. Now, what makes this a little more challenging, this question? Well, what are the units on H given to you? Joule, Joule seconds, Joule seconds. In this case, it's not in electron volt seconds. So when you plug in all your numbers here, you're gonna end up with an answer in uh, an energy of a, the photon in joules. So in this case, we're gonna have to rearrange it and get it in electron volts. And so in this case, if we kind of rearrange here a little bit some, some terms. We'll have hc over lambda equals 5.1 electron volts. And so if we solve for lambda, we'll have hc over 5.1 electron volts. Cool. Would, um, tell me why you said that equal to zero? So in this case, if I want the minimum or uh, the maximum wavelength, which of course wanted the minimum frequency. At the minimum frequency, how much kinetic energy would the ele ejected electrons have? Uh, so zero, that's why I said it equals zero. That way we get that maximum wavelength or minimum frequency. Cool, so in this case, if we do lambda equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times the speed of light, So in this case, so my units aren't quite going to work here. What do I need to do? Like I, one of two things, I can either convert this into electron volts or this into joules. It's our choice. It doesn't really matter which one we choose. I'm just going to turn the electron volts into joules here. And to do that, the electron volts on top, joules on bottom. And what's my conversion? So one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Why are the joules in that So, well again, electron volts is a measure of energy, and it turns out that uh, an electron volt is the energy associated with accelerating an electron, which has 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs of charge, through a one volt potential. And the energy would be Q delta V, and so you have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times one volt, oh, okay. gets you this many joules, or we just call that 1 EV. That's why the conversion's there. Cool, can anybody get me an answer for this wavelength? What do you got? Is it somewhere on the order of like 10 to the minus seven-ish meters? 
cool, and that's in meters. Notice that would correspond to 244 nanometers. And if that's 244 nanometers, what region of the spectrum might that be in? Well, if you notice, visible light's from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers-ish. Other side. So notice you got violet at 400, red at 700. We're lower wavelength, but higher frequency and energy than violet. What's on the other side of violet? Ultraviolet. That would be in the ultraviolet region. Cool. 